welcome back to my channel beautiful minutia if you're new here my name is tiffany and welcome to the final weekly reading vlog for february and also the final weekly reading vlog for we love jenny i think every single week i've been reading at least one thing that jenny has loved and has finished quite a few things that she loved so what i'm reading this week is i have started the double by fyodor dostoevsky and this is obviously a compilation but it has the double in it and this is one that Jenny really loved of Dostoevsky and it's one I haven't yet read it's I think a novella I don't think it's a short story I think it's long enough that it would be considered a novella because I think it is over 100 pages I am three chapters in so far and I'm reading this with Chris Ulis from Dostoevsky in Space and Penny and that is really fun to be reading with both of them I don't know if I've ever read a book with just the two of them before so that's really fun <laughs> I'm not very far into it like I said only three chapters so I don't really I don't really know where we're going with this because I've never even read a description of it so I'm enjoying it so far though because Dostoevsky is like my happy place I love reading things about Dostoevsky I was hoping to have read a lot of it last week and that just didn't happen because I do need more concentration for Dostoevsky than I do for a lot of other works including classic works there are a lot of them that don't require the level of concentration that a Dostoevsky does for me so I am hoping to finish this one this week in addition I absolutely need to finish the two towers this week because I'm reading this with my patreon and our final discussion is on Saturday. Today is Sunday. I'm a little over halfway through so that should not be an issue. I have been reading some of this physically but I've been alternating that with the audiobook narrated by Andy Serkis which is just I probably already mentioned that with The Hobbit and with Fellowship of the Ring but if you like audiobooks at all you need to listen to Andy Serkis's readings of Lord of the Rings. I've been reading my way through several nonfiction <laughs> throughout the month of February but there's one that I really want to prioritize this week and finish and that is Fast Feast Repeat by Jen Stevens and this is a book about intermittent fasting. I've mentioned it before. It has a lot of the science of why intermittent fasting works and the health benefits of it. It's not just like this weight loss dietary thing. There's so many health benefits of intermittent fasting. So I'm really enjoying reading that. I'm about halfway through that one, but I'd like to finish that because Penny had bought me the 28 day fast start, which is kind of like really a journal to work your way through the first 28 days of intermittent fasting. And I wanna finish this book so that way I can start doing that in March. And then lastly, a book that I started over this weekend is The Tropic of Serpents by Marie Brennan. This is book two in the Memoirs of Lady Trent series. And I read book one in August, I think. So I read it for my in-person book club and my friend Whitney Drew and I have decided we want to continue with the series. So we are reading book two. I would like to finish it this week just because my March is kind of full of a lot of big books and I would just really, really like to finish this before then, but I'm not going to pressure myself too much. It's my main bedtime read right now and it's just fine. I'm not, I'm not very far into it, just a couple of chapters, but I just really, really like this world. I really, really like Lady Trent and her fascination with science and dragons and the way that that's like blended into this kind of Regency era feeling world even though it's not taking place in actually England it has like fictional countries but it feels like Regency era England it feels very similar to that kind of a setting but there are dragons and she's a naturalist and she wants to study dragons in a time but that's not really acceptable for a lady <laughs> she should be doing more ladylike things and leave the science to the men kind of a thing and that is not at all how she feels <laughs> and so I really enjoyed the beginning of her story in A Natural History of Dragons and I'm already enjoying this even though I'm not very far in. So those are the four books that I am focusing on this week but I don't know how far I'm going to get in them. <laughs> it's not as busy of a week as it was last week so I'm hopeful that I will get more read but I will update you on how my reading goes. Thank you. 
Wednesday and I have gotten some reading done. I've actually finished a couple of books so I'm going to share that with you. First of all, I did finish The Double by Dostoevsky and I really enjoyed this one. This was just a fun ride. I'm sure that Dostoevsky was trying to say something deeper through this because that's what Dostoevsky does but I didn't really have the mental bandwidth to just try to dissect all of what he might be trying to say. So I just decided I was just gonna enjoy the plot and it is a really fun plot. So we're following this civil servant kind of a guy who's got this job and he just wants to impress people and he seems really socially awkward and gets himself into like a lot of scrapes. And then I don't think this is spoilery, but it does happen at the end of chapter five. He encounters someone who looks just like him. And then this person starts working for the same place that he works for. And so you're questioning throughout the book, is the main character actually crazy and hallucinating? Is this other person like a part of himself that he's projecting? Or is there actually another person there who is essentially his double who is trying to kind of like take over his life. Like what is really happening here? And I love books that have that where you just question what exactly is going on here. So I thought it was really fun. I thought the start of it was pretty slow as we're getting introduced to Goliadkin's life and what it looks like and his interactions with people. I thought that that part was pretty slow and wasn't really finding myself fully immersed in that. But once we hit the point where he sees his double for the first time, from then on, I was like glued to the page and was just like absolutely fascinated. I love stories with like doubles and doppelgangers and kind of like mistaken identity and all that kind of stuff. I love stories like this. And Penny and I were talking, we've both finished it. And she said that parts of it reminded her of The Scapegoat by Daphne du Maurier. And I agree, it's got that same kind of like quality where you're questioning Am I crazy? Is the main character crazy? Is this really happening? Like what is actually going on? And I love that feeling in a story. There's definitely quite a bit of like <laughs> craziness, descent into madness, fever dream like quality throughout this story, which I feel like Dostoevsky does really well and he does it in a lot of his stories. So this was actually, if I'm remembering correctly, his second published work Poor Folk was first, which I read last fall, and then this one. And I enjoyed this one a lot more than Poor Folk, but I'm not a huge fan of an epistolary novel and Poor Folk was epistolary. And it had more to do with a societal commentary. This feels a lot more like future Dostoevsky's to me. I can see traces of things that he's done in other books in this short story novella. So that was really fun too because he was much younger. This was before he was exiled to Siberia. So there's a lot of things about him and how he thought that were different at this point in his life, but it was just really fun to read this. I I just enjoyed it so much. I also finished Fast Feast Repeat by Jen Stevens and I was actually farther along in that book than I thought I was because it said I was at the 50% mark, but there's like a really long chapter towards the end of like different people giving testimonials. And then there's like a whole Q and A section. Well, not Q and A, like frequently asked questions thing at the end of the book that I like skipped to things I was particularly curious about, but you don't have to just sit there and read it. And then there's like indexes and all kinds of stuff at the back and notes of like scientific studies and all that kind of stuff. So I was a much farther along in that book than I thought I was. I really enjoyed it. I thought that she did a really good job of making the science of why intermittent fasting could be helpful to your body very digestible and I really liked the way that she talked about this is not a one-size-fits-all thing and she criticized a lot of diets and health trends as touting themselves as one size fits all, which is why we have scientific studies that say veganism is the most healthy, best thing you can do. And then we have studies that say the carnivore diet is the best you can do. And then we have studies that say the paleo diet's the best. And then we have studies that say this and studies that say that. And you have all kinds of stuff because people have individuality in their biochemistry and what works for their body. So when she's talking about how to eat and even how long of a fasting window you should have, most of the time for most of the things she's telling you, 
it's mess with it and see what your body thinks for itself. The one thing that she does stress is like the clean fast where you're only drinking water and black tea or black coffee because anything else, even like sugar-free gum or something like that can actually stimulate an insulin response in your body, which I did not know. So that was really interesting to read about that. And I just, I enjoyed it. I did feel like at times it got kind of repetitive actually a lot of times she just come back and revisit the same points over and over again in multiple chapters and the conversational tone I think makes the science maybe a little bit more accessible but then there'd be times like y'all that's so neat and she'd say stuff like that and it would just throw me off and just wasn't what I was expecting but I think that it had solid information I think it was clearly presented and I'm really really glad I read it and looking forward to trying the 28 day fast start book next month. So that leaves me with two books. That leaves me with The Two Towers, which as you can see, I am really close to the end of. I think I just have like three, maybe three or four chapters left. Really, really enjoying this. Every time I read this book, I forget that the way that things are split up where the first half of the book we're following Legolas and Aragorn and Gimli and Merry and Pippin and then the second half of the book is exclusively Sam and Frodo who aren't in the first half of the book at all. So I'm with Sam and Frodo now and Gollum and just just enjoying my time. There's been lots of laughs that are in the movie that I forgot were also in the book and so it's just really fun to revisit this and as I was reading it I'm like oh man Treebeard is just one of my favorites and then I'm like oh then I get to this point and I'm like oh my gosh Faramir is one of my favorites and we just get to different points where I'm just like oh I just love this book it's so expertly crafted and I feel like this book is more more evenly paced I guess than Fellowship of the Ring because Fellowship of the Ring has a really slow start which I love because you get really acclimated to the Shire which helps you know how much the hobbits are really giving up to go on this adventure and also what they see themselves as fighting for so I think that that is really good and really important and really enjoyable but this book definitely kind of has more of a hit the ground running feel although it's still much more slowly paced compared to modern day fantasy so it's not like you really break neck pace at all because there's all kinds of stories and songs and poems littered throughout which is really fun as well. I'm also making progress in the Tropic of Serpents. I am probably about a third of the way through maybe a little over a third and I am kind of struggling with this a little bit now so I'm I'm gonna keep going because it's not like I want to DNF it or anything. I really liked the beginning because we're back with Isabel and she is getting ready to go on this trip to the south to study dragons down there. But then once they end up making those plans and they end up leaving and they end up getting there, there's a lot of politics, which I really do like in fantasy worlds, but there is a lot of different places and different names and different people groups and it's very... African feeling with a lot of names that are just thrown out there and I really wish I had a chart to kind of better see where where things are. There is a map at the beginning that shows how everything is laid out and that's awesome. I'm really glad for that but I wish we had a chart of like people groups and kind of how they relate to each other and we don't have that and so I find myself feeling just like a little bit lost and a lot of it just feels like gibberish in my brain and so far we have not gotten to a point where she has seen a dragon or continued and what her purpose is here at all which is something that is continued from the end of the last book so that's spoilery I'm not going to talk about they have a purpose um, beyond just charting the dragons and what they look like. And so we haven't even gotten to a point where we can do any of that. But I do really love the illustrations in this book. It's just, it is enjoyable the way that it's written. So I think once I feel a little bit more acclimated, I'm going to enjoy it more. But I did want to share this quote because I just, I love this. As someone who was raised as a homeschooler for a lot of my life and now I'm homeschooling my daughter, we talk a lot about the love of lifelong learning. That it's not just you learn while you're in school, that you just love learning for all of your life and trying to instill that love of learning. And I love this so much, this little snippet of a conversation between Isabella and Natalie. And Natalie says, another thing to study, will you ever be done? I smiled into the sun, one hand holding my bonnet against the firm grasp of the wind. 
I should hope not. How dreadfully tedious that would be. So there's a lot that I still really enjoy about this book. I just think it's taking me longer to get acclimated to it. So hopefully when I come back to wrap up this vlog, I will have more to share with you. Hopefully I will have finished it and can tell you whether or not it got better for me. it's time to wrap up this vlog it's now Friday and I didn't finish both the books that I wanted to finish and that's unfortunate so I did not finish the Tropic of Serpents but it did get better for me once I finally hit part two then they're in the jungles and they're interacting specifically with the Moolish people who are the people who live in these swamp like areas in the jungle they actually call it the green hell and they are actually looking for dragons now. Winston says hi, he just jumped up. <laughs> Anyways, so they're, they're there and they're interacting with this specific group of people and that's making it a lot easier for me because it's the customs of those specific people, not like when they went into kind of like the port town and there are all these different ethnicities and the people that they're with now in the jungles, they do reference them, but they, for me, they kind of got lost in the muddle just a little bit of like so many different people groups, so many different customs, so many different politics happening. But now that we're here in the swamps, a little over halfway through on chapter 14, it's getting better for me. They still haven't seen a dragon yet though. So I don't know how long it's gonna take for them to actually see a dragon. I did finish the two towers. What can I say about this? I love it so much. I love it even more than Fellowship of the Ring, though I do love all the time that we spend in the Shire at the beginning. I love this. And it's really hard to stop because it ends on a cliffhanger. And I could just go right into the next one because in March we're supposed to be reading Return of the King and it is the end of February. Actually, it's March 1st when I'm filming this, so I could go right into it. But I have a lot of other <laughs> books and buddy reads. I have to start right now, so... Alas, my beloved Return of the King must wait, but I just, I love the relationships in this book. They're hitting me harder this time than they ever have before, and I've always loved the relationship with Frodo and Sam, and it's just further cemented by this reread. I love this conversation between Frodo and Sam, which does make a bit of a, an abridged appearance in the movies. I don't like anything here at all, said Frodo. Step or stone, breath or bone, earth, air, and water all seem accursed, but so our path is laid. Yes, that's so, said Sam, and we shouldn't be here at all if we'd known more about it before we started, but I suppose it's often that way. The brave things and old tales and songs, Mr. Frodo. Adventures, as I used to call them. I used to think that they were the things that wonderful folk of the stories went out and looked for because they wanted them, because they were exciting and life was a bit dull. A kind of a sport, as you might say, but that's not the way of it with the tales that really mattered or the ones that stay in the mind. Folks seem to have been just landed in them, usually. Their paths were laid that way, as you put it, but I expect they had lots of chances, like us, of turning back, only they didn't. And if they had, we shouldn't know, because they'd have been forgotten. We hear about those as just went on, and not all to a good end, mind you. At least not to what folk inside a story and not outside it call a good end. You know, coming home and finding things all right, though not quite the same, like old Mr. Bilbo. But those aren't always the best tales to hear, though they may be the best tales to get landed in. I wonder what sort of a tale we've fallen into. I just love, I just love Sam's perspective of like the tales that really matter are the ones where you hit the hard times and you don't turn back because the people who turn back, like that's not, that's not a tale worth repeating. And I just, oh, I love Sam and I love the strength that he brings to Frodo and 
every time I read about him, people are always like, oh, you need a Sam in your life. And it's almost like when I'm reading Little Women and I'm like, oh man, I wish, I, I want to be a Beth. I want to be that kind of calm, steady selflessness. And so when you read Lord of the Rings, people are like, everyone needs a Sam. And I'm like, man, I want to be a Sam. I'm not there. <laughs> I'm not as selfless and as brave and as loyal as Sam is, but he inspires me to be a better friend. I loved every second of reading this book and I can't wait to read Return of the King, but also I don't want to read Return of the King because then that means it's over and I have so many books scheduled that I can't just start the trilogy again immediately after finishing it in March, even though that's exactly what I'm going to want to do. Well, that's it for this reading vlog. I finished a lot of things in February. <laughs> I'm thinking about it as I'm preparing for my wrap up and I'm really pleased with how much I ended up finishing. So I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. How did your February reading go? What have you been reading lately? And if you've read any of the books that I chatted about in this vlog, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit like and also subscribe so you can continue to see more bookish content from me and I will see you again next time.